Hello. Hello, Ali Adilson. Hello. Hello. How to make people. Mm. So as I said, we'll be just starting in a few moments, just uh, waiting for others to join us. Hello all, you are really welcome. <clears throat> Hello all. Uh, so the course will be maybe about uh, one, uh, one and a half an hour, one and a half an hour. Yes, that's it, yes. So Hedia, is it okay? You uh, may uh, see my screen. So is it okay? So maybe four minutes more and uh, we'll be starting. So I would like just to know uh, 
where are you from? As uh, through the Google form link, I can note that uh, there are participants from different countries in the world. Maybe you may uh, let me know in the chat. Okay, you are welcome. Okay, welcome from Morocco, Malaysia. Hey, Oman, Africa. Welcome. So just one minute and we start. So, okay, that's fine. Let's start. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, really thank you for uh, you joining to join us today uh, to attend a workshop about R Markdown and that would be uh, animated by uh, Mohammed Fadel Ihadeden. And uh, we are really honored to have you today, Mohammed. Uh, so let me first just uh, briefly introduce to you Air Ladies uh, Tunis. Uh, in fact, Air Lady, Ladies Tunis is uh, a local uh, chapter of Air Ladies Global, uh, an organization that promotes gender uh, diversity in uh, the Air community uh, worldwide. Uh, we are uh, Mune, Hedia, Haifa, Itaf. Uh, Ines, Umayma, Khawla, Shaima, Kawthar, Nirmin, and uh, Noor. Uh, we are a group of uh, Tunisian ladies uh, passionate about uh, our programming. Uh, we are for, from uh, different backgrounds, uh, data scientists, uh, bioinformaticians, uh, uh, biostatisticians, and uh, we aim uh, meet up in person or uh, virtually to uh, learn about uh, the R programming the language algorithms and uh, advanced tools. So uh, our uh, pri priority is uh, to provide uh, a safe community uh, space for anyone identifying as a minority gender who is interested in uh, working with R. Uh, we exchange materials, uh, discuss uh, any issues we have on working with R and receive news and updates about R. Uh, we are really uh, a part of a great community. Uh, now, I think uh, it's time to start uh, with uh, Mohammed. 
so before starting, uh, please feel free to ask uh, your questions in the chat below as uh, we go along, and uh, we will uh, be glad to trade them at the end of uh, the workshop. The floor is yours, Mohammed. So just I will stop sharing my screen. That's Great. Okay. So I will share my screen. Okay. I will tell you if that's fine. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yes. Okay. So first of all, thank you very much. I, I, I want to thank uh, Lydis for the invitation. I'm really uh, honored to be uh, here and uh, uh, presenting an introduction to our markdown. Um, I want also to thank you, uh, to thanks uh, our ladies for uh, all the great contribution uh, that you are doing daily. It's really great to see um, a dynamic group, uh, particularly in uh, Africa. Uh, as I think that uh, Africa has a huge potential in data science in general and uh, R in particularly. So it's always great to see uh, some African groups uh, doing such an amazing work. So thank you. Um, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. How about the sound? Is the sound perfect or less than perfect? Yes, yes, it's perfect. Fine. It's perfect, great. So um, let me present myself just um, quickly. Um, so my full name is Mohamed Al-Fadili Hadadan. Currently I'm a PhD candidate in economics. In Al I'm based in Algiers, in Algeria. Um, so if you want to find more about myself, just uh, feel free to check out my website. And uh, also feel free to follow me on Twitter under Mo Fodil. I tweet mainly about, uh, about Airstart and uh, sometimes about Algerian politics. And uh, recently, very recently, I think yesterday or before yesterday, uh, I and uh, some folks uh, have uh, created a, a group, a Nigerian group uh, based in Algiers called Algiers R Users. Sorry, yeah. Mohammed. Sorry, yes. but they are participants as just saying that the sound has an echo. I... Ah, let me just, yeah, let me fix that quickly. Okay. So. Uh, can I? Yes, yes. Take your time. Yes. How about now? Is it uh, better? Uh, for me, it's better for the, for, from the beginning. Yes, they say yes. It's okay. Yes. Ah. It's better. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Mona. Uh, so yes, we have created. Uh, a local group called RGS Area uh, R User, and we hope to uh, collaborate uh, in the future with our ladies Tunis and or any uh, other R group. Um, so we are really excited about this uh, adventure. So let's talk about R Markdown, right? Um, what is R Markdown? First of all, R Markdown is a package. It's an R package developed by uh, UVZ. Yuri Z is really uh, an, amazing, an amazing guy. He's, uh, he's really humble and quite funny guy. I highly recommend, uh, I highly recommend you guys uh, checking his uh, presentations. Um, he is the author of uh, Our Markdown with many other folks, of course. And he also created a Blockdown for um, creating websites using Our Markdown, uh, Bookdown for writing books in R. Uh, what as Zaringen. Uh, these slides are made using his package called Zaringen, which is used, used to create uh, slides all in R Markdown, uh, which is really uh, great, and many other uh, packages. So uh, wh why R Markdown is great? Uh, there are many reasons, but if I have to uh, choose like a couple, I would say it's great for reproducibility of analysis or researchers. Um, currently, as you may know, uh, academia is going into a, a crisis. Um, many, many papers uh, are difficult to reproduce, which um, like hinders the confidence uh, that we are uh, giving to the academia. So people are giving more uh, emphasis to reproducibility. It's, it is becoming really, really important. And our markdown document allows you to uh, control this kind of reproducibility. It's really great for that. 
So uh, I would say also automation. So you don't have to uh, make if you, for example, if you if you will have uh, to make some daily analysis, you could, for example, create an R markdown document and you just specify the variables that will change daily, and you will make a, a, an automated report uh, and gain a valuable amount of time. Um, you can check on YouTube on, on some blogs uh, the experiences of many many uh, firms that have used Air Markdown and they are all uh, grateful about this tool. Also, Air Markdown uh, allows you to collaborate with people as uh, you can, for example, write text and code inside one document that can be um, uh, how, that can be controlled and um, followed by a versioning system. Uh, generally, I would say Git. You can control your the evolution of your uh, of your document using Git and GitHub. So it's really cool to do that, and you can uh, collaborate with people. They could make uh, they could, for example, make a pull request, uh, pull your your document, uh, add some some data, some analysis. So it's really cool. And finally, I would say also integration. Why integration? Because R Markdown is integrated with many other tools. Uh, for example, if you want to generate uh, a PDF, you will integrate, uh, R Markdown is integrated with uh, LaTeX, so you will have to install LaTeX on your system. Uh, or a, a package called TinyTech, we will talk about it later. And it's integrated with a uh, Remark JavaScript uh, library, so it's, uh, it's quite uh, a system. And many, many other, uh, other tools. I will not speak about uh, all the mechanics of uh, the integration, uh, Pandoc, uh, Markdown, etc. It's a bit advanced, and you are not required to uh, master all this uh, this area of expertise. So um, we don't need this kind of preparation in order to uh, to create a document an R and D. So um, if you want to dig more about um, R Markdown, uh, I highly recommend you guys to check out this YouTube video. It's a, a presentation about Garrett, we, which is, uh, who is uh, an engineer at R Studio. He gave uh, a presentation about R Markdown and its benefits. Uh, it's about 20 minutes, I think. Let's check it. Uh, 18 minutes, yeah. 18 minutes, sorry. So it's really, really interesting and highly recommended if you want to understand more the broader picture of R Markdown. So, all right. So let's talk about the uh, R Markdown anatomy. So R Markdown is composed of three main elements. So you have the YAML. The YAML is uh, the metadata. So it's, the, it's a kind of uh, some little information that you will introduce at the beginning of your uh, R Markdown document. Not a big deal, but really important. So not a big deal in terms of in terms of effort, but they, they influence uh, a lot your uh, your output. So of course we have the text. So you will provide some text inside your RMD document. We, you will um, format it according to some rules. Uh, we will uh, see how to do that. And finally, of course you will uh, you will put some R code or any other language code inside your RMD document. This is done using what we call Code chains. We will see how code chains work. It's extremely easy and straightforward. All right. So let's talk about Markdown. So you have R Markdown, which is composed of R language and Markdown. So Markdown is um, a language that allows you to wrap some text uh, and create some text document very, very easily. Um, so this is uh, written in Markdown. So I'm aware that R Markdown is more than just R plus Markdown. So you can see here that uh, the format of this sentence is quite uh, interesting. We have uh, an emphasize here. We have a text which is italic here and we have uh, like a, a quote text here. So uh, how can we uh, do that in, in, in Markdown? So it's quite easy. Let's open uh, an R Studio editor. Uh, first of all, you create an R markdown by going uh, here, file, new file, 
and you choose R Markdown. Uh, you have the choice to create an output of HTML, PDF, and Word. So uh, due to the, um, to the limited amount of time, we have only one hour and a half, I will mainly talk about HTML format, but it's quite the same. You will have uh, some differences at some times, but not, it's not a big deal. So we give a title to our document. I will give it an introduction to Armadale here. All right, and we click OK. So if we click OK, new file is generated and RStudio um, gives us a template. So let's just erase this template. Um, maybe no, just erase that. So Buddha, please, how, uh, how is the, the, the zoom? Do I have to zoom more or uh, is it okay? Or people can see. Let's zoom a little bit better. So I think everyone can see here. So um, I introduced you before to the YAML. So this is the YAML. You specify some important parts of the document. Here we have specified the title of the document, which is an introduction to our markdown. Here the type of output, which is HTML, HTML document. We could have specified um, Word document or, um, or a PDF. Um, sorry, I have some, some messages about people entering. Um, just one second, I will, I will try to hide this panel. How can I hide this? No, let's move it a bit on the bottom. Yes, I think this, yeah, this works. All right, okay. So we have the YAML here, and now we are ready to write some markdown text. So uh, the text was, I am aware that R markdown is more than just R plus markdown. So we can just simply Right, um, aware than our markdown is uh, more than markdown plus R. So, how to compile our RMD document into uh, an HTML document? So, it's really easy. We can just click here the knit. We will have to, of course, um, save the document. So we click knit and we give it a name. Let's say introduction RMD. All right, so it will compile your document and we will have an HTML document here. So you can see that we have the title displayed and the text. Uh, however, uh, the text is not formatted. We have a simple, a very simple sentence, which is not uh, like this sentence. All right, so how do we um, style this? So it's easy. Uh, we have to make it bigger, first of all. So the levels of, uh, of text in R Markdown are displayed using uh, the hashtag. So the first, uh, if you put one hashtag, it corresponds to the H1 of HTML. I don't know if you, do, if you are familiar with HTML, uh, but this corresponds to the biggest title of uh, your document. And the second, uh, as you add an, uh, another hashtag, uh, the, doc, the, the title or the, the sentence gets smaller, or the, the, the word, yes, all right, gets smaller. So we have entered six, I think, uh, hashtags. Let's uh, write the bigger, uh, the biggest one, and put only a hashtag at the beginning, all right? So I'm aware that our markdown is more than markdown plus R. So we can just click here again, knit, but it's like, uh, it's a bit annoying to click each time. So uh, there is a shortcut in, uh, in RStudio, uh, which is uh, control shift plus K. Uh, in Mac, it's command shift plus K, it's the same. So if we type control shift plus K, we have a compiled document uh, instantly. So you can see that the, the sentence is bigger now. Uh, what we have to do now is make this R markdown in uh, italic and this more in uh, uh, bold. And this R plus R markdown in code, uh, in code text. So how we do that, it's really simple. We can just put uh, here for the italic part, we can put a star here at the beginning and a star at the end of the, of the word. And more, we can, if you we, if we want to, to bold it, we will, we will uh, need to uh, put two stars at the beginning and two stars at the end, all right? 
and here for the the code text we have to uh, put a, a semicomma or an inverse comma i don't know how to call this uh, guys like it's uh, it's an inverted comma and we are ready to uh, format our document so if we save it and compile you will see that it, um, it corresponds to our sentence okay so I'm aware that Power Markdown is more than a Markdown document. Here you can you can see that we have a, a gray background that we don't have here because here the output is a, a slide which is not really exactly the same uh, output as an HTML format document. So it's it's uh, it's okay. But you can see that uh, here our Markdown is in italic and more is in bold. So it's, it's, it's it is uh, extremely simple to. Uh, to format text in uh, in R markdown, you can also uh, provide a link. For example, um, if uh, someone click on some word, he will be redirected to a link. So how we can do that? So let's let's uh, do it. If you want to know more about it, just click here. So let's say I want to allow people to, um, when they click here on the here word, they are automatically redirected to the R Markdown website. So I will put here uh, between brackets and open uh, another uh, curly bracket, I think. I don't know what, uh, how to call it. I'm sorry, I'm not a native English speaker. So let's call them. Uh, brackets, yeah. Brackets, that's the perfect. Rectangle brackets and circle brackets, yeah. So let's put inside. The, uh, I'm sorry, I just, let's put inside the R Markdown website. All right, let's copy the link. And we are um, ready. So let's compile it. Control Shift K. So uh, when the user, uh, I'm sorry, I just dropped a, a slash bar here just to raise it. Okay, now hide it. And when the user click here, he will be redirected to this website. All right, so it's extremely powerful and uh, extremely easy to do. So. so you don't have to bother yourself with writing long uh, HTML format, uh, long um, URL format, and uh, etc. So you're easy. Uh, you're re really uh, it's easy to do that. So quite cool. Um, now, I want you guys to, I, I want to, yeah, I, I want this tutorial to be like quite interactive. So uh, I don't want, I don't want it to be like me talking one and a half, one and a half and like be um, really, really boring. So for, uh, for, guy, for people that are really new to our markdown, um, I, I, I get, can give you, for example, two minutes in order to uh, reproduce this sentence. So, uh, and tell me uh, about your feeling. If you are really advanced in R Markdown and uh, yeah, that, that seems for you basic, so you can just drop it and yes, take a bottle, uh, take a cup of water or something. So let's give you, for example, Mona, how about two minutes from now? What? What? Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just say that um, uh, for people who are uh, new to R Markdown, uh, I don't want to, to this tutorial to be like me talking for an hour. Yes, yes, that's better. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I will. I will give them like a, an exercise, just two minutes, in order to allow them to report use this. Yes. This that sounds good. So good. Yeah. Great. So guys, uh, please open an R Markdown, a new file, uh, and. Put this uh, and format this uh, this sentence into um, and to uh, and follow this formatting and create an HTML output. So you have two minutes starting from now.
Great, so I think time is up. Um, can I just uh, receive your feedback about this? Uh, is it easy? Is it extremely easy? Or uh, I will just read the comments. Uh, I don't know if I can read the comments. Yes. Ah, it's so easy. It's easy. Great, Great. to that, Anna. Great, so let's go on, let's continue our presentation. Uh, I will close this uh, R&D document. Right. So, so uh, just Adilson is asking, uh, he said that it's easy, is the website a standard, he asked. It's, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Is the website a standard? Yes, what do you mean, Adilson? Maybe you can explain more? Standard, uh, yes, I didn't understand. About what, what does that mean? Uh, standard website. Um, I think uh, the website uh, is, uh, of course, it must be uh, deployed somewhere uh, in order to allow everyone to, to check it out. Uh, that's the basic. And the URL uh, should be valid. Uh, so just uh, uh, yes, so the link provided to say we should always Yes, I have uh, the syntax for uh, for the link should always follow this. Uh, this is the R markdown syntax that allows you to embed web links into a presentation. All right. So let's continue. Uh, so uh, please, can you repeat the manipulation one more time? Um, it's a question by Bushafra Al Mustafa. Uh, so the huge, I think Mona, the YouTube, the video is recorded, right? So I think the people can. Yes. Yeah. So we, yes, we are. We are absolutely now uh, live on YouTube. So you may review later uh, all uh, what we what that was done today. And great. So yeah. So you guys can just uh, rewatch it later if you want. So let's continue. Um, now let's talk about images because it's really important to talk about them and, and it's uh, a bit tricky in Markdown to, uh, to use, them, use them properly. So let's say I want to embed some image into my document. Uh, let's say this uh, hex sticker, the hex sticker of the Air Markdown package. So I will have to copy the link to the, to the image here. I can use a local image or uh, an external image. Here I use, I use an external image using this link, but it's uh, the same uh, procedure. So uh, how we can embed an image in, in, um, in Markdown, it's easy. So we will have to write it as follows. So exclamation, open brackets, and then another brackets. And here we paste the link to the image. So you can, you can see that the, the image is rendered in uh, my session, in my, in my script. So here I can put some description uh, in order to, uh, like for example, when um, there are some people that, that, have, that have some disabilities and can see uh, properly, they have some text that can describe the image. So I can type here the logo uh, of the R Markdown package. So if I do that and I compile, I have my image, which is rendered properly. So you can see that it's extremely big, uh, but of course we can just uh, resize it. However, in, uh, in, in Markdown, it's a bit tricky to resize the image. Uh, that's why we are, we are going to see another, another uh, manner of embedded images, which is uh, using HTML. So hopefully in Markdown, we can just write raw uh, HTML inside. So if you have some knowledge in HTML, that's great. You can use it and exploit it fully. But if not, it's extremely simple. You just have to open a tag called image. Inside the source of the tag, we provide the link to the image, maybe a local or external, and uh, we close the tag. What is really great about the, the, the image HTML tag is that it's easy to specify the, the width and the, the height of the image. So you can just, for example, go for a height of um, like 100 pixels, a small one, or 
let's say 400 pixels and a width of the same let's say for 100 pixel and let's compile it we should have a nice logo great so you can see that it's uh, uh, quite um, in a good size I would say uh, we can of course uh, put it in the center of the document using uh, always HTML so we have a tag called center so we can use center here and close it at the bottom so we can use center image close center and then we compile and you will see that our image is at the beginning uh, at the, the middle sorry so you can see that our image at the middle of the document so it's extremely easy uh, all of uh, this uh, manipulation is done using html but uh, of course you don't have to master html we will see a third method uh, uh, a more r oriented method that allows you to manipulate images in uh, in r markdown so this method relies on a function of course in order to execute uh, functions R function in uh, in R markdown. We will have to use uh, what we call cross chunks. We will we will talk about cross chunks later. Just focus on the function for now. So let's open a uh, chunk, R chunk, and we have a function uh, called include graphics, which is part of the Knitter package. So R markdown works a lot uh, with the Knitter package. So we will have to use both of them. So keep in mind that the Knitter and R markdown are uh, like a member of the same team. So here we provide the path of the, of the image and we can specify uh, at this level, what we call the option of the chunks. We can specify, for example, the, um, the size, and the width. So don't mind uh, with this uh, code chunk, just keep in mind that there is a function for this. So we will talk about code chunks, the parameters, and the options uh, later. So if we uh, need that, so we should have a nicer image. So it's really, uh, it keeps the, the, the size and the resolution of our image uh, clean. So it's I will re always recommend you to use this function when you have to deal with images, external or, uh, or local, and or GIFs uh, all, uh, also, so it's straightforward to use and uh, quite powerful, all right? So, um, let's continue. So for now, we are only talking about the R Markdown HTML site. We are not talking about the, the LaTeX or the PDF. So um, let's continue. Um, so we have talked about the include graphic function. All right. So as, as you have seen, R Markdown is easy. It's extremely easy to use and uh, you will master it in like 10 or 15 minutes. So no worries. But if you have some uh, some like uh, interrogation, some problems with it, uh, you can always uh, refer um, on the internet, but uh, there is a cool, a really a cool um, integration within the RStudio document. You can go to help, r markdown quick reference here. So click help, r markdown quick reference. So RStudio has integrated uh, a tutorial about uh, markdown formatting. So you can see here the Markdown Quick Reference, and uh, it gives you the, the rules, I mean, the main rules on how to, uh, to use Markdown. So it is quite interesting, and uh, I highly recommend it, recommend it. So yeah, and it's easy to read, and it's compact. So take a look. So we have talked about uh, our, our Markdown, now let's style the markdown so how to uh, we can style it um, in order to style as i said before the markdown is a, a document that is uh, integrated with html and also with css and javascript so we can use some css uh, in order to uh, to style our documents all right so uh, of course you will have to to know a little bit about the css stuff but it's really not a big deal. Just uh, grab some uh, some templates and, and use them. So in, in HTML, 
if you want to style a document, we will have to use the uh, style tag. So here, style, and open it and close it. So here is the style tag of the HTML. And let's say, for example, that we want our body, the body of our document to be uh, in, like in, uh, in red color or in gray. Let's, let's test that. So how do we, how do we uh, implement it in CSS? We will have to write body, open curly brackets, and say background color, and here write red. This is pure CSS, so it's not uh, complicated, but uh, you, will, uh, you will have to uh, read a little bit about it. So now if I run that, I should see my body in red. Right, nice. So this, this is a way to, uh, to, to, to style our, our markdown. Of course, you have uh, many, many, many hundreds of other uh, uh, parameters in the CSS that you can use in your, in your markdown document. Or not only in the, the background colors, you have, you have other uh, properties. Uh, you should take a look. Um, but this is a way to style uh, your document, all right? But don't worry, of course, you will not, uh, you don't have to, to, to learn CSS or HTML. I will show you later a nice, a really nice package that, uh, give you, that gives you some templates in order to style and theme your, uh, your R&D document, all right? But this is the way, uh, this is, uh, a way to do this, all right? So um, let's go for another, for another example. Let's say, for example, I want to, uh, to write a sentence in which one or two words are in a red color. For example, um, this uh, word is in red. And I, don't, uh, I want to, the, the, the word, word here, this word, to be in red. I would, for example, I could use simply the span tag, which is always HTML, and wrap it inside word. And here, close the span tag. And inside, inside our span tag, I would use the style reference, so style equal uh, color red. So I will just replace it here. And if I compile this document, I will have uh, the, this, this word in red. All right, so let's check it out. All right, I don't know if you can see, but here at the bottom, I have the word, word in red. Um, in, uh, in LaTeX, if you want to compile in PDF, you, you would have to use uh, other command, for example, text color. In LaTeX, is used to colorize uh, some words or some sentences, but it's uh, here we are talking about HTML, so um, this is how uh, it works. But if, uh, keep in mind that if you want to compile it in PDF, uh, if you want to compile your document in PDF, all the HTML tags will be in your, ignored. So, uh, yeah, that's really important to know. All right, so let's let's move uh, further. Now let's talk about R markdown. Um, so as I said before, uh, R markdown is composed mainly from uh, from the YAML, which is the meta meta information, but more importantly, it's composed from uh, code. And text. So, uh, how we uh, we introduce code, R code, or other code, uh, other language code inside our R Markdown document, we use what we call the chain. So, the chain has this form. It begins with three back, uh, backstick and this curly brackets. Inside the curly bracket, we specify R. We write R because we want to R, uh, R code, and we close our chain with three backstick. Inside the chain. We provide, of course, our code. All right. So let's uh, begin with an example. For example, let's how how we create a chunk in R. So you can go here. 
up where um, you have a C icon, a C plus icon, and click on insert. And you have uh, a menu uh, that allows you to choose the language that you want to use. Here, for in our example, let's use an R uh, R chunk. Let's call it R. So it's uh, automatically provided the chunk for you. And we can, for example, run, let's say, head, uh, head empty cart. So if I compile it, we will have the six first rows of the empty cart data frame. OK? Great. So there is another option to, a quicker option to introduce uh, R chunks, R code chunks, uh, which is Control Shift, uh, Control Alt, sorry, and I. So if you want control, R, uh, control Alt and I, this will give you a uh, direct sleeve uh, the code chunk. So it's uh, really fast, so you don't have to click each time here. It's annoying, I don't, I don't want to use each time the mouse. So if you want uh, to be proficient and efficient in your, in your coding, just use Control Alt and I. All right, great. So you don't have to, uh, a quick uh, remark here, you don't have to compile your uh, entire document in order to, to check for the, for the result of this chunk. You can just click on this uh, uh, triangle button. So if you click here, you will see the result inside your document, okay? So quite interesting. Uh, if you want to, for example, debug some code or uh, check some results before compiling, um, so you can see that uh, the results are displayed within the, the, the R Markdown document. Uh, but for example, uh, what if you want your results to be displayed uh, within the console here? Let's say, for example, you are using a, a, a two screen monitors, one screen for the console and one screen for the script. I think it would be interesting to display the results in the console, all right? In the result in one screen and the code in the other screen. So we can just uh, modify this printing behavior um, using this uh, icon here. So this uh, configuration icon and click on chunk output in console. So by default, the chunk output in light is, is, is checked. But if you click chunk output in console, uh, keep output, all right. And then here, if we close this, uh, and if we click here again, we will see the result in the console. All right, let's check it out. All right, that's great. So quite interesting. Uh, it's, um, I think it's a small trick that you, uh, you must uh, keep in uh, some place in your head. So let's, for now, let's, I prefer, for, for this presentation, I prefer to, to keep my code in line. So let's, reconfigure it, check output in line. Great. So is there any question uh, up to, to now or do I move forward? Mona? I think it's, uh, it's a bit much for an introduction. It's too much information. Uh, a um, short amount of time, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will try to, to answer. Uh, I think uh, uh, we don't have any question. We have a question from Iman Hassani. Can, can we extract any R code? from the text uh, if needed. So uh, if I understand your question, you, want, you have an RMD document and you, uh, you would like to extract only the, the code, the R code, and like uh, drop the text. Yes, it's possible to do so, but uh, we will see it later because I have dedicated a slide for it and I really want to show the slide with the GIF, uh, with the, the funny GIF that comes with it. So we will see how to do that later. All right, let's move forward. But wait, wait a, wait a second. Uh, is it only possible to, um, 
to render or to introduce R code within our R Markdown document? Uh, the answer is no. We can use as many language as we want. Uh, of course, these languages must be supported by R Markdown. We have an important list. We can use R, we can use Python, we can use SQL, SQL, uh, as some people call it, Julia, C++, JavaScript, and Stan, and more. If you want to take a look at the, the available languages, just uh, use this uh, R command. I just run it, and you will have a list of all the available engines. So Knitter, names, Knitter, Knit engines, get. So if I run that, I will have a list of like 43, uh, 42, sorry, languages that you can implement in R Markdown, which is really huge. So you can, uh, using, for example, the reticulate package, you can write in one anal analysis some Python and some R code that just play with each other in really seamless manner. So it's extremely powerful. I highly recommend it. Okay. So now let's move forward and talk about the R chunk. So let's reproduce this uh, ggplot code and see how we render. So let's erase this information. We don't need it anymore and introduce our code. So here, let's load our uh, ggplot package. Right, great, and make some simple uh, histogram about the HWY uh, variable. So here, ggplot um, mpg data frame, which is uh, a data frame. Uh, it, it's a built-in data frame uh, available in the ggplot package. So when you load the ggplot package, you could uh, simply use the mpg directly. So here you can. Uh, sorry, I forgot to load it before. So you can, here you will have the MPG data frame, which is a cool data frame to experiment some stuff. So let's say I want to histogram of a variable. GM histogram. Let's fill it with the blue color and compile it. So here you can see that we have um, deployed or we have rendered uh, a plot, a histogram of the HW uh, variable. So you can see that the code is, uh, is available here and the plot below, all right? So what you can see also that is that uh, the message that ggplot provides uh, has been displayed uh, with the plot. You can see here start being using beans equal 30, pick better value with bin width. It's a classical message from ggplot that tells you that you should use another beans. So it's quite interesting to see that uh, all the messages, warnings are displayed uh, in, our, uh, in our format. So it's a bit wrong. Uh, let's say for example now that we want to, um, let's say, remove the message and the warning. Let's say that we uh, would like to, uh, to remove this message. I'm not interested in this message. It's ugly and I don't want to keep it. So we have, what we can do, we can use what we call the uh, check options. So here, uh, after the R, we can put a comma and just use uh, the card, uh, uh, the chunk option available. So we have, we have, we have many. Uh, like um, I think uh, 100, not 100, maybe uh, um, 40 or 50, I don't know, but many, many options that you can use. Uh, and these options allows you to configure your, uh, your output. So uh, if we want to drop the, the warning and the message, uh, I think this was a message, so we can use, for example, here the option message and put it equal false. So if we put the message equal false, it won't be available when I knit my document, all right? So if I compile it again, you will see that my message is no more uh, displayed, all right? It's cleaner, we have a cleaner output. So this is the first option that I wanted to introduce. 
let's talk about another option. So now, uh, of course, you um, sometimes you may have some warnings uh, displayed, and these warnings can be dropped the same way using the option warning equal false. So if you run that, all the warnings are dropped when you compile your document. All right. You can also do that uh, interactively, clicking this small button here and just check uh, the show message, show warning uh, catch here. All right. Uh, an important, uh, he, an important um, observation here about uh, R chunks or any uh, code chunk that you use in your uh, document is uh, the importance of uh, labeling your chunks. So we can, uh, for each chunk, we can, and it's highly recommended to, to give them a name, a unique name. Okay, so for example, here I, I can give it a name, uh, HW histogram. Okay, so uh, this way I will uh, be able to track my, my chunks in a really uh, in easy manner. So if I give it a label here, I could also give it a label from this, uh, this panel. So I can just write HW histogram here and it will be written instantly, uh, instantly in uh, the chunk. So I can click apply and it's great. So now suppose I have two code chunks with different code. Let's say here I want to plot the C, T, Y, but let's say I have two code chunks with the same level. If I compile this document, I will encounter an error. So I cannot have uh, two chunks with the same leveling. It's really important. Let's connect that and see the error. You see, so execution halted, so duplicated, uh, we have the error called duplicate chunk label, HW histogram. All right, so it's important if you may encounter, if you encounter this error, just change, uh, check out the duplicate labeling and change it. So here I can write here CTY histogram, change the label, label to CTY histogram. And uh, what, is, what is really interesting is that we can uh, navigate between the chunks, between the labeled chunks, using this, uh, this tool provided by RStudio. So if I click here in the bottom left, I can move from one chunk uh, to another, all right? So we have only two chunks here. It's not really uh, amazing or extraordinary to use it, but in, the, in some situations where you have like 100 chunk in one document, trust me, this is a time saver and a life saver to use this, all right? Uh, okay, so let's move forward. Um, drop this second chunk. We will work only on on this one. So, ah, yes. So now let's say uh, let's see how to modify the size of our plot. So in the same manner, we can use, uh, for example, here we can use other options that allow us to modify the plot size. These options are called uh, fig, begins with fig. Let's say I want to modify the fig width, put it to seven inches, and the fig height. Let's just remove this warning message. And fig height to seven, to let's, let's say to six. And if we compile it, we can see that our uh, plot has been resized. So it's still bigger. Let's let's put it smaller, just that you can see that it works. Let's put it to one to three to three. Let's, let's put it this way. And now it should be smaller. All right, that's great. So let's extremely easy, you can do that in uh, some seconds, and um, you can experiment it uh, until you, uh, you, you find your perfect uh, size, all right? So this is the way to do that. A quick uh, observation also here. This, uh, option, uh, this option doesn't work when you have some external or local images, for example. 
So this works mainly when you work with plots, pig width and pig height, but I don't recommend you to use them. Instead, use the, these options that are called out width, sorry, out width and out length. So these options, out, out height, sorry. So these options will work no matter the, the, the object that will be resized. So this will work on plots, on images, on videos, on, on etc. On videos, I don't know, I didn't try, but it should work. So just use these two options. You can specify the size in pixel or in inches. Let, let's do that in pixel, 100 pixel here and let's make this bigger and 100 pixel here and connect that and this should work all right so it's quite interesting to use that so my advice always uh, rely on these uh, two options to resize your uh, output all right let's move forward So let's talk now about the plot position. Uh, for example, let's say that I want to put my plot uh, on the middle of the document, on the center. Uh, it's easy to do so. We use an option called fig uh, align. So if we look for it, fig align, I have some choices here, default, left, right, center, okay? So if I choose uh, the center, I can uh, see my plot on the center of my document. Here, you can see my plot is now on the center. Okay, so uh, quite easy to do so. Uh, of course, you uh, you are not uh, you don't have to specify this option uh, within each chunk. Each time you 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 create a new chunk, you can create a global what we call a global chunk that. Uh, will uh, apply your uh, your options, your desired option on all other chunks. All right, so how to create this kind of chunk? I never uh, remember the exact writing because I always rely on the template. So I will say, let's create an R markdown document that we will remove later. So here the code chunk that we need. So it's called R setup, just copy it and put it here. So it's it used the the option the option chunk function set and inside this function you specify you specify all the options uh, that will be applied on uh, all the chunks. All right, so you don't have to write each time your desired output width, output height uh, each time you uh, you create a chunk. So you you can just uh, put it here and it will be applied uh, always. So out height, 100 pixel. Let's say I want, um, yes, the message equal false and the warning equal false. Now let's remove it, let's remove that, just keep the uh, let's say, let's just keep the label. Let's also use the fig align center option. Mm -hmm. Let's say fig align. Let's just, yes, the center in lower case. All right, fig align equals center. Okay, now if I run this and just let me uh, add another chunk here so that you can see that all our outputs are in the same format. CTY histogram, and let's just get CTY and fill it with red. And now if I compile my document, I should see two small plots, one on top of each other. Perfect. So you can see that I didn't specify any option here. I just specified the global option at the beginning using the options, uh, option chunk set function. And these uh, options have been applied on all my outputs, okay?
um, quite powerful and interesting. You know. Great. So let's keep going. Or uh, I should make uh, should give a pause. I think. Um, yeah. Let's give. Uh, let's take a pause of. Uh, let's, let's take five minutes. Oh, okay. okay. All right, Mona. Okay, Mohammed. Right. Yes, okay, yes, okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you have any question, I would be happy to, to answer them in the meantime. Uh, in fact, there, there were questions in the chat below, yeah. I, I think, I, I see. So uh, what we can do, let's, uh, let's take just a, a pause of five minutes, just relax, uh, drop our laptop, uh, like um, drink some water, and we will come back and I will answer the question. Okay, fine. Thanks.
Um, hello again, everyone. Hello. Hello. So I continue, Mona, or I just read the question? Or... Uh, so as you like. Let's read the questions. Uh, all right. So. Uh, is it possible to apply the same settings for all code chunks? For example, turning off warnings. Yes, I have answered the question. You will have to use the option chunk function and uh, apply and introduce all the, the options in it. Uh, quite simple to do so. Uh, I think it's the only question. Yes, it's the only one, so cool. I will move to the other slide, to the next slide. Right. So, we have seen the plot position. Now let's see how uh, to hide the code. So, in order, for example, if you if you create a report that you want to send to your superior or to someone else who, who is not familiar with R or with coding, you would need you would have to uh, like hide the code and just display the output. Uh, how to do so in uh, R Markdown? Easy. So we have a, 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 an option called equal. So equal, just set it to false because by default it's set to true. So if you set equals equal false, now we will uh, only the plot will be displayed and the code will be hidden. If we click that, you can see that we don't have the code anymore. We only have. Let's make it bigger. Let's draw this. This is too small. Uh, let's, let's remove this option here. Um, do it again. All right. Now you can see that our code is not available anymore. We, I will have. I have only the nice histogram. All right. Let's move forward now. And. Uh, see how uh, to toggle the code appearance because uh, sometimes you want to um, allow the user or the reader of your documents to uh, have the choice whether to read or not the code. So, for example, you, they can uh, click on one button and show the, the code or uh, click again and hide it. It will be like a, a toggle button that hide and show uh, your code. So how you can do that? You can simply um, rewrite our uh, our YAML format and specify the uh, HTML here. Let's say I want here the output of HTML. Uh, an important uh, observation here is that uh, the your um, YAML format must be perfectly indented. So it's really sensible to the indentation. If you don't indent your, um, your YAML, uh, you, will, uh, you will get an error, all right? So let's get this tab here, and let's get another tab here. I always forget the, the, the indentation. So for holding equal true. All right, so if I need that, I have an error because I didn't, I think I didn't, uh, yes, I didn't indent my document properly, so let's get it, ah, yes, yep, ah, I forgot something, I always, I have some troubles with the YAML, that's why I always keep some code, uh, some code close me, so now this should work. That's great. So now I can, sorry, I forgot to delete this equal equal false option. Let's uh, write another code, code chunk just to see how it works. So here I can make a title, TTY histogram, uh, TTY variable, variable in red, here HW histogram, and now if I click that, what 
happen ah problem with the label that if you want let's do that uh, perfect now as you can see we have the code that is displayed in our document but you can observe or you remark a small button here so if i click on this button it will hide my code all right so if i click again on the button it will show it so it's really interesting and quite uh, um, it's a comfortable option that allows you to play with your code so if you are interested for example in uh, studying the code of uh, some else code you can just uh, show it and we, when you're done or if you're not interested you can simply hide it uh, by default the code is uh, is shown so if i refresh if i refresh this uh, the code is by default shown but we can change this behavior and make it uh, like make the the, the, the code uh, to uh, to hide by default you can do so uh, in the yaml so instead of show i can just put hide here and by default the code will be hidden so if i run that you will see that the code is not uh, displayed but if i click on code i will have my uh, r code all right and of course i have another option here at the top where which i uh, in which i will uh, be able to show all the code or hide all the code okay so quite an interesting option it's um it's it, it, it is generally available within the notebooks which is another format uh, close to our markdown uh, but if you want to implement this uh, option in our markdown just use this this yaml all right uh let's move to the next slide so how we can just uh, plot multiple figures uh, like this way in multiple columns. So uh, in our markdown, sometimes uh, we will have to, for example, plot uh, two uh, figures on the same line. Uh, some people like to use uh, some packages. Uh, for example, there are the co-plot package that allows you to combine some plots or many others but you can do so in uh, in our markdown how to do so so here i will just create a chunk i will give it a name i'll give it a name let's say combine a plot here i will say fig with equal uh sorry i think it's Fig outputs. No, it's fig. Uh, let's let's try it with fig width or out width. Let's try with out width. Let's give them uh, like like fifty percent each. Mm -hmm. Fifty percent, and now. I just have to use an option which code is called I forgot the name it's okay it's, I think it's key something with key mm, sorry I will have to choose one I sometimes forgot the options because I don't uh, use them uh, frequently I keep old I think it's old what mm -hmm. Go for show and see if that works. Keep show and put hold. I think this one should work. And now 
if I uh, combine, if I try to combine two plots, let's say a plot of the empty cars data frame and the plot of the iris data frame, so if I need that, I should have two plots, one uh, in, um, alongside with each other. So it's a plot. It's a big no, it's not what I have looked for. Uh, let's do something else. I think this should work. Why is that? Boom. Just a second. Uh, let's just move this, this part of this. To be honest, I forgot how to do that, but this this have an option. I can see, for example, I, I can I will check it later and send the code to uh, to Muna. But it's okay. I just forgot which option should I use. But it's quite easy to do. So I will just check my code. Let's check my code. Where is my file? So here, intro LMD. And now I can have, can look for my image. Two images. Mm -hmm. People being shown. All right. Show the code hide the plot. If we are normally, where is this? I think it's in somewhere. Mm, yes, it's here. So it's out with fiction equal bold. So I, I think I, I, I was right, but uh, it didn't work for me. I don't know why, but this is the code that should be uh, used. Let's, uh, let's mm, do it again and see if this works. So here out with, we are specified a width of 50% for each plot and we have used the fiction uh, option and uh, specified to hold the plot. Now I think, this should work. Why it didn't work at the first time? I don't know, maybe I forgot something. Yes, it didn't work. Maybe it's the, it's this format. Let's move this here and put this here. And see if this works. Maybe the plots are too big. Or should I open on the browser? Mm -hmm. That's weird, that's weird, because uh, it seems to work here. With, let's say I will just try to put this here. Picture, quick caption, all right. I think the plots are too big. Let's try with this. Mm, it's not working. Mm, that's okay, that's okay. Let's move forward and uh, just investigate later why it's not working, but it's a way that uh, allow us to hold some plots on the same level. Maybe the plots are too too big, but mm -hmm, that's not a problem. Let's move forward. So let's close that and move here. So now uh, we have seen how to uh, hide the, the code. Now let's see how to, to show the code and hide the plot. Because sometimes you want, for example, to, to run some analysis and you don't want the output to be displayed in your document. For example, if you want to create some, some side effect, you, can, uh, uh, you will need, for example, to hide the uh, to show only the code. Uh, to, for example, uh, when you create a package, uh, on the on the readme, you will tell your reader that you have to install the package uh, with the, and you will provide the code you know, that allows you to install the package, but you don't want this code to be run. So uh, how we can just implement this uh, situation? Uh, we can just do the uh, include equal false option. So if I want to display the code and uh, I'm sorry, the evolve equal false option. So the evolve equal false option will uh, just print the code and uh, will not evaluate the code. It will not evaluate it. It will only print it. So if I just same way put the eval option here, equal false and click the button, 
now I will have only the code and not the output. All right, it will not be rendered because these co two code chunks are not executed. Uh, they are only uh, displayed for uh, many, many uh, reasons that can be, uh, uh, for example, uh, how to install a package or how to, uh, to download the data frame that you have already downloaded and you don't want to rerun each time the same code. So it's mainly used for tutorial purposes, mainly. All right. So equal eval equal false. Now let's move a bit and talk about tables in R Markdown. <coughs> So, uh, if we, for example, if you create a code chunk and we want to display a table, let's say we want to display the first row, six rows of the uh, empty card data frame or the first 10 rows. So, if we click, we will see a row table, like a row R table. So, it's not what we want. Uh, we want uh, an HTML table, a nice looking table. So, so how we create a nice looking table in our markdown, we have many, many packages, but uh, I would say the most classical one is the cable, uh, is, the, is the Knitter package. Uh, it has a function called cable, which allows you to create uh, HTML format tables. So if I, I use the Knitter package here, and uh, just call the cable function, and inside the cable function, function I introduce the empty calls, the head and the calls, uh, look at the difference. So you can see that the difference is really important. We have a nice looking table which in which column is, uh, uh, with each column displayed in uh, nice looking uh, space. And uh, the rows are also uh, well separated and it's really, uh, good to see this kind of table. So, all right, so we have seen the cable function, to remember it. Um, now, the cable function has many options. For example, you can just hit the tab to see all the options that the, uh, the cable function uh, gives you. So it gives you uh, a place to, for example, align the, the figures and the, the cells, the, the cells content. Uh, for example, I will align them in the center. We can provide also a label or a caption to your table. So we can create uh, our amazing table. And then if we need that, we have this information displayed. We have a caption here, our amazing table. We have our information on the center of each cell, so uh, uh, the columns are quite interesting to use uh, the this kind of parameters. Um, but it's not it's not really important to dig into each parameters because we are limited in time. But feel free to try out uh, uh, these options. For example, row names equal force. We can just drop the row names here. Yeah, you can see that we, have, we don't have any more the raw names of the empty card data frame. So just just try it, try them out uh, in like um, in when you are uh, when you like it. All right, so here our code, well formatted code. Now let's talk about another package because the cable package is really great. It uh, provides you with many functionalities but it's, it is in some way limited in many other functionalities. So um, we have another package called Cable Extra, which gives you many, many, many other uh, really targeted functionalities uh, that helps you really format your tables. So let's load it, library Cable Extra. So you, you need to install it before, of course and you can just provide as many uh, information as you want. So let's, for example, uh, use the uh, head MPG and wrap the head MPG inside the cable function. Now, using the cable extra package, we can specify 
you can use the function provided and specify the, um, the columns, aspects, and row aspects. So you can, for example, use the column space function. Inside the column space function, the first argument are the columns uh, order. So let's say I want to apply forma format to the first and the second column or from the first to the third column. And you have also, uh, you, have, uh, we can, you have many, many functions. Let's say I want to apply a background color to, uh, the, to the third first columns. All right, let's say background, I will apply a background of, let's format this, a background of red. So here, now if I click that, I will see my first three columns in red. Right. Object MPG doesn't not found. Object not found. Why is it not found? Ah, I'm sorry, I forgot to load the. It's the empty card, not MPG. So. So if you can, let me just drop the first output. Here and just to focus on this kind of chunk. All right, so you can see here that our output uh, is, uh, we have like um, introduced the color, a color bag, uh, background to the, to the first, to the three first uh, columns. Uh, we can also work on the, on the spaces between the columns. We can add, for example, let's say um, the width. We can just use like 20 centimeter here. Uh, just run that. So you can see that the width of our columns has, uh, 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 has gone bigger. So we can just work on all the columns uh, and provide the width of 10 centimeters. Let's say uh, we have how many columns in empty cars, I think we have 11. So now let's run it. So you can see that all the columns has been uh, spaced with 10 centimeters. Um, the package is uh, really uh, powerful. Um, I, I, for, uh, personally, in my personal experience, I didn't use it that much because the cable functionalities are quite uh, sufficient for me. But if you want to really uh, focus on some aspects of your table, really targeted aspects, uh, I just uh, highly recommend you guys uh, checking out these functionalities of the Cable Extra. It's really, really uh, uh, interesting. We can just light blue here, um, make all the cells in bold, for example. We have many, many options. Bold equal true, and all the cells will be in bold. So as you can see here, I've forgotten the column, it's okay. But yes, so it's mainly the thing, you can play with it as you wish, and you have many options to, uh, to play with your tables. So there are many other packages that provide you with this kind of functionality. Uh, you have the GT package, a really famous package, but uh, which, have, uh, which has another framework of uh, uh, other, like, other types of syntax, but it's, which is, uh, it's really cool to use it. Uh, you have also the GT summary package uh, and many other. But um, personally, I just know the cable extra cable and GT. Uh, so feel free to, to use them and read the documentation. So let's move forward. Uh, now let's talk about the table of content. Um, it's really easy to implement the table of content in R, just wrap it inside the YAML. So output HTML document talk equal true. So if we if we do it here, let's make some titles. Introduction to R Markdown. And make a second level title. This is an introduction to R Markdown with 
our ladies she means um, let's put first title uh, what is our master so we have three titles with three different levels in our document and we want for example to create a table of content that will just uh, take into account this uh, information and we'll display a table of content also so we have we put real html document in output and we specify talk equal true so now if we run it oh my god i always have problems with uh, with this yaml format so now i should have a nice looking table of content so when i click in uh, in one line i will be redirected to the uh, to the uh, corresponding uh, title. So if I click introduction to our markdown, I will get it here. Uh, what is our markdown also? So you can see it now because it's only one page, but if you have many, many pages, when you click on uh, one title of the, of the table of contents, you will be redirected to this, uh, to the corresponding uh, space, all right? So if we click here, what is our markdown, you will be redirected to this area. Okay, so quite powerful, quite interesting. Uh, when you have some really long document all right so we can uh, of course apply some numbering on it uh, you just introduce another uh, yaml option number section equal true so if we produce here number sections equal true and we knit we will have some numbering in the, our table of content so we will have one 1.1, 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, according to the levels of our uh, headings, uh, all right? Uh, according to the hashtags. So the first level, the hashtag one, will correspond to one, and the second hashtag, two hashtag will correspond to the second level title, etc. So you can see one corresponds to one hashtag, 1.1 1 .1 corresponds to two hashtags, 1.1.1 1 .1 corresponds to three hashtags. So, this is uh, great in our markdown. Now, let's say I want to uh, move my uh, my table uh, of contents at the bit, uh, at the bottom of our markdown, at the bottom of my document. So let's say I want to move it here. Let's give it a title, for example, table of content. And I want my table of content to be here. I didn't find, I'm not sure, but I didn't find uh, an easy solution in our Markdown to do so that allows you to really put your table of content anywhere that you want. But there is a, an option that which uh, um, I, um, I found in uh, Stack Overflow. It's, uh, uh, it's like a uh, jQuery script. I don't know if you have some information about, uh, about JavaScript. jQuery is a library in JavaScript a really famous one that uh, facilitates JavaScript in uh, uh, JavaScript coding. So what what this code does is that it uh, tells the R markdown to uh, to put the table of content which has the ID TOC, insert it after the table of content. So we have our table of content. Uh, if we render, for example, let's render this. Remember that this is an HTML format. So if you click on inspect, you will have the ID of this title. So that the ID of this title is here. So you can see that it is highlighted. So we can copy the ID here and put it. Of, of course, the same way we can copy the ID of the table of content here. Let's say I want to inspect this element. So if I inspect this, you can see the ID T of C in uh, uppercase. So I just tell, um, I just use jQuery to uh, specify the position of my table of content and insert it after the table of content, all right? So if I run that, I should see my table of content at the bottom. Nope, it's not at the bottom. Why it's not at the bottom? Sorry, I think, I think there is, ah, I forgot the, I will have to correct this in the in the slide. Here I have to put a, a backslash in order to tell that uh, it's at the end of the tag. So here, if I run this, well, 
but the same script, script function, table of content, this should work. We are selecting the table of content here. And I think we have mistaken the ID of, uh, of this title. I think we have a problem with this ID. Let's just copy the ID table content, all right, we have the ID. Yes, it's table of content, not table of content. So we have to be aware of the ID. So now this should work. Yes, great. So it works. So we have our table of content just below our table. So we can just put our uh, TOC, our table of content, anywhere that we want using this small uh, jQuery syntax. You don't have to learn jQuery, just copy this code. Uh, I will uh, correct it uh, when I send uh, more another slide. Um, but just copy it and just uh, uh, inspect elements, inspect the elements of your of your document and copy the ID uh, of your need uh, when you want to put the table of contact. So just copy the ID and you are good to go. I think the the ID of the table of contact should be always talk TOC in 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 either case. So just we'll have all, only to copy this ID and just move the table of content whenever you whatever you want all right um i think uh, we have a question or no? Oh, no not yet so great let's move forward uh just uh, a quick remark here we can create a floating table of content which is available on the left of your document and which is interactive also so we can just run talk float here let's get rid of this number set so numbering dot float equal true. Now, if we run dot float equal true, we have our table of content. I don't know why it's no, no. Ah, sorry, I forgot to remove this script. But now we should see a table of content on the left of our document here. So it's quite interesting and you can just click on each element and you have um, a nice looking uh, table of content. All right. So let's move to the next slide. Ah, um, so we talked before about air markdown teams, teaming. Um, there are many, many ways to theme your air markdown and Within the R Markdown package itself, you can find uh, some 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 teams, some interesting teams. But uh, according to my small experience, I would highly recommend the Pretty Doc package, uh, which is available on Chrome. You can install it easily. It has been developed by uh, Yi Zuan, and it is extremely easy to use it, and uh, it is uh, not it is lightweight. It's not heavy to use. So even if you have, uh, like, uh, like the author said, it's a lightweight yet nice looking theme for R Markdown. Why lightweight? Because when you have a, uh, a big R Markdown file, uh, if you uh, add uh, some, some theming, it will like uh, make it bigger again and it will be uh, cumbersome. It will be like, um, it will slower your compilation. So uh, this package is really great. Uh, and it's uh, extremely easy to use. Just uh, copy the, the YAML format of the package after loading it, of course. Just if you, I copy this output theme and just put it here. All right, now I have just, let's just check that I respected the the YAML, our markdown, HTML document. All right, let's copy this. Let's copy all of this, just to be sure. All right, great. So let's just change the title, our markdown production. And here the author, just remove that, remove the date. And now, if we will run it, we should have a nice looking team. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to load the package. So it's load 
I already create new stock. So if I run that, uh, I think I just, I didn't use the theme that should be used. Mm, let's go for, let's go for another theme. Let's go for uh, the Cayman theme. Let's go, let's just copy this. So let's go for Cayman theme and see how it works. So if I run that, yes, we have a nice looking R Markdown format with uh, it's kind of uh, formatting. It gives you some nice uh, aspects to your titles, some colors. So if you want to theme your R Markdown document in a quick manner, just copy the YAML of the files and it will be uh, applied instantly. Uh, it's really um, nice to, 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 um, to see and you have the choice of many, many uh, themes. There is the Cayman theme. You have also the tactile theme. Let's copy this. Let's just try to see that. So if I put tactile here and pin it, you will see a theme which is um, quite nice to use. So I uh, go ahead, guys, and check this uh, amazing package because uh, it offers many, many formats. So you have architect format, you have the Leonis, the HP, SDR. So easy to use and uh, powerful. Perfect. So we are almost done. We have two other uh, tips that I want to, uh, to provide. So at the beginning, um, I, have, uh, I have received a question about uh, how to extract an R markdown from a script. So at the beginning, I will just, I will begin by showing you how to uh, transform an R script to an RMD document. So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting, for example, when you have an R script and you want to transform it uh, into an R markdown document. So you will have to use the spin function. So here, for it, let's create a, a simple script and code, like, let's call it a script. Let's be simple. So if we want library, um, let's say, let's plot ggplot2, and uh, here, let's say mpg, uh, filter, let's, let's just uh, print the first row of the MPG data frame. All right, um, and make a plot, yeah, GG3 MPG, RS, I can't believe this, this on Instagram, make the same plot. And now if I run that, I have my MPG data frame here and my plot. Now, what if I want to transform this R code into an RMD document? I will have to use the spin function. So it's like Knitter from the Knitter package, spin. So I need to provide the name of the, of the, of the R script. Of course, mind the, the location of the script. It has, you have to specify the full location. Here the script is within our project, so we don't have to specify the first uh, location, just uh, the name of the script. Let's put tag here and look for script. And argument knit equal false, because I don't want, uh, I don't want our document to be, uh, to be knitted. I want an RMD document. I don't want it to be compiled. And here I just need to specify the, the format of the report, which is RMD and where you go. Type, I'm sorry, I think it's not type, I think it's not report. It's the, the format. So it's format RMD and now we have our script uh, .rmd. So if we look for it in our folder, let's click, sorry, I have this this tape which is hiding. So if I click script, dot rmd, where is it? Script, script, dot rmd. I can't see it. 
where is I think I have to restart my session. Let's restart it. Let's restart here the, the thing. And yeah, here it is. The script.rmd. So here we have our um, our code that has been wrapped inside the check. So it is uh, done automatically. It's quite uh, interesting that uh, it's yeah to see that because it's really smart. Uh, so if you want to provide some text, we will have to use uh, some Roxygen comments. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Roxygen. It's only uh, it allows you to to provide some text using the hashtag plus comma. So now we can just uh, put some text. Here is some analysis analysis of the mpg data frame below you can find plot of the distribution of the hw variable now this will be rendered in uh, in text format so here are the oxygen comments and they will be transformed into text. So if we, I run this spin again and open my document, let's first, uh, here, we are, here we are. So you can see that uh, from the script, from this script, I just got into this uh, nice looking and well formatted RND document, which can be created as well, which can be compiled. And yeah, of course, we'd have to provide some options here. For example, in the head MPG, I would have to specify the warnings equal false. So um, it's, I think it's easy to do so. So if we if we uh, write, if we have this kind of writing, I think it's some hashtag, and we uh, add a plus. And here we can, for example, set equal equal false. Let's just uh, rerun the spin and see if the, this has been taken into account. So let's open the script out LMD. Perfect. So you can see that we have just specified the option using this. Uh, sorry, I'm just zooming. Zooming in. Zooming in. So you can see that we have specified the options before the code using this uh, syntax, so hashtag plus. And here we have specified equal equal false, and maybe message equal false also. Let's put equal equal true. And when I run the spin function, I will have my RMD document that takes into account my options, my chunk options. Quite interesting, the spin function, amazing. So highly recommended uh, option. When you have an R script and you want to translate it into an RMD document, you don't have to rewrite all the script and make all the efforts. You just need to um, use the spin function with the syntax uh, that is required, which is uh, uh, the, um, the oxygen comments and the hashtag plus for the options. All right. So let, now let's uh, reverse that. Now, what if I want to transform a document into an R script? All right, so I have, let's say I have a template. I have this document here, which is the R Studio template for my RMD. So let's call it uh, intro two. So let's say I want to extract all the code from this RMD document. Uh, there is a function called Perl, so from the Knitted package that allows you, allow you to do so. So if I run Perl and I call uh, the name of the document, which is intro2, and run that, I think intro2 open connection, no such file of directory. I think I'm mistaken about the name of the, of the thing. No, I don't think so. Knitter Perl, what's happening? Intro2.rmd, I'm so sorry. I think it's the fatigue. So it's intro2.rmd, if I run that, I have my script. So if from an RMD document, I got a script doc, a script.r, so it's intro.2. So you can see that I had, I got all the codes that are available within the, within the RMD document, all right? So here, 
uh, you can see the summary cars and the plot, uh, etc. Now, uh, what if I want to take uh, the documentation? So you can see that uh, I extracted only the code. What if I want also to extract documentation in, um, in the command format? What if I, what I can do is uh, run another option, another argument called documentation. And if I put two within the documentation, so you have three options, zero for no, for no documentation at all, one for only uh, the, 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 the option. So we will extract only the option which is equal to false, cause, etc. But if we, uh, if we provide the two, we will have all the, 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 the text in common. All right, so if I run it again, and just drop it, reopen. I think I have to uh, run it again. Make sure that two. Um, I think I have to restart my session. Let's restart it. Uh, um, documentation equal to ah I, I should maybe delete it so I can generate another document. Let's delete that. Let's delete intro equal to refresh and now run it again with documentation. Uh, now if I open that, I have all my uh, my text, the text of the uh, RMD document uh, wrapped inside some oxygen columns. Um, quite interesting. Um, so I think that was all for this introduction. I hope I wasn't uh, really boring. Um, I tried to really provide the maximum of information. Uh, I know it's, it can be confusing, but just uh, you can just rewind it uh, with a couple uh, of cookies and uh, a cup of tea, and it will be like smooth. Uh, so the, the Perl function, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mohammed, for this uh, great workshop. I hope that this has been uh, useful for you two uh, participants. Um, and I really learned uh, as well from you too much uh, while you were presenting, uh, uh, let's see, fundamental things on um, Arc markdown that that's uh, that are worth stepping through and uh, getting a clear understanding about them. So thank you so much. Uh, You're so, welcome. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yes, you are welcome. So maybe if uh, if there are still questions, maybe feel free to ask them uh, in the chat below. Uh, let's just wait for them. Maybe. <clears throat> so as uh, Mohammed said, all uh, the workshop materials uh, would be provided later and uh, who, that would be possible to uh, review uh, the, the workshop again uh, on uh, our YouTube channel, Air Lady Tunis. So here's a question, Iman asked, can we edit RMD, uh, RMD in LaTeX? Later, yes, of course. I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention it because uh, I really focused on the HTML part of it. Uh, but it's also, of course, it's also possible to uh, compile your document in um, in PDF in LaTeX. So, first of all, you you will you will need to install a LaTeX compiler. Generally, you can you have a choice between Tech, tech Maker uh, and other softwares. They are, they are huge, uh, like one gigabyte uh, of installation. Uh, hopefully the creator of the R Markdown package has provided for us uh, a package, another package called Tiny Tech. So if you, uh, if you go here, sorry, just hiding this. If you uh, go to Google and just write Tiny Tech package, Hey, Mohammed, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Ah, I'm okay. Just... I have been disconnected. Ah, okay, fine. I'm sorry. So uh, I was saying that uh, where, uh, where I did stop? 
uh, here, here it's, it's okay. Just to really show us the, the link here. Yeah, yeah, as I said, so uh, the creator of the R Markdown, uh, the UE, uh, has provided for us a package called TinyFleck. Really an amazing package that when installed, uh, it will provide you all the capabilities of LaTeX. So you will not have to, to install uh, the LaTeX distribution. So only install TinyFleck package. Uh, it's like uh, 140 megabytes of uh, installation, not, not a big deal. And then you will you will you will be able to compile your RMD document into PDF. So how to install Tinitech? Just install the package, install packages, Tinitech, and then after installing the package, you will have to install the Tinitech distribution. So you will have to run the function called install Tinitech. So if we, when you run the install Tinitech, you will wait uh, depending on your internet con uh, speed, uh, like 40 or 30 minutes, and then all the tech distribution that you need uh, for working with RMD will be installed and you will have you will be able to compile the document just use knit here and knit to pdf and look how it will be compiled so here we will have we, we, we have a nice looking tech pdf all right Now we can also use, uh, you, we can also compile it into Word documents. So knit to Word, easy to do so. So if I knit to Word, you can see that I have my document in Word with a nice format and ready to be sent or uh, do whatever you need. Um, I think I have answered the question. Uh, I have another question, I think, from Hadia Tanani. I think book down and flex dashboard. Yeah, so book down, the book down package is built uh, upon the R and, uh, R markdown package. Um, globally, in summary, the book down allows you to uh, create uh, books um, in R markdown. So if we, uh, if you run uh, some function in the book down package, you will have a template with uh, each uh, chapter, um, uh, each chapter will be specified inside an R Markdown uh, document. And when you compile uh, all the folder, you will have a nice looking book, uh, book with uh, uh, sections and subsections well formatted. So for people that are preparing a thesis or want to write some books, uh, it is a highly recommended tool. Uh, really, really simple to use. Uh, and uh, if you have some knowledge in R Markdown, you can do uh, whatever, whatever you want in, in Bookdown. So it's the same procedure. Uh, you just uh, have to make additional, uh, to run additional function in order to prepare your book. But at the core of the package, it's the same. So it's the same um, functionalities. Um, concerning Flex Dashboard also, it's a, a Flex Dashboard it allows you to create some dashboards as uh, its name uh, indicates. Uh, but it's really, all, it's also very simple to use. You only uh, provide some, some it's, it's, it's an RMD document, of course, it's the same format. You will have only to provide some code and text inside some uh, containers. So the, R, uh, the Flex Dashboard document uh, by default, um, separate or divides your, your HTML document into some parts. So you can just specify the space that each part should take. And then inside the containers, you, uh, you provide whatever you want, some text, some uh, plots, some interactive plots, tables, etc. So it's extremely easy to use and straightforward. Uh, also uh, highly recommended. Um, you're welcome. Uh, can we write Arabic text in on RMD? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I have never uh, written in Arabic in RMD, so I'm not sure about the answer that I will give. But I think it's possible because I have seen some uh, document in Chinese. So I think the uh, the type of um, the fonts 
can differ from the Latin forms. So I think it's possible to, to write in Arabic. I, I think so. I, I will have to, I will have to to check this. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's possible. Uh, I think you are done with uh, the questions. Um, if you have uh, any later, don't hesitate to send us uh, your questions on uh, tunis uh, at rradis.com. And as I said, as, as usual, we send you all the workshop uh, materials and uh, a link form to give us uh, your feedback. We would really appreciate uh, that. And so don't make sure to uh, don't miss, um, so you don't miss our uh, daily coding challenge and uh, one package per day challenge and to follow us. Uh, thank you all for uh, your attention. Thank you, Mohammed, And um, stay tuned to our uh, upcoming events. Thank you very much, Mona. Thank you for uh, your efforts. Thank you. You are welcome, Iman. Thank you. I will come, Mohammed. Good. Thank you, Good Iman. Guys. Stay tuned to our next event. Keep in touch. Goodbye. Thank you. You are welcome, Adilson. Thank you. Goodbye, Sen. Thank you. So I will end up the session. All right. Okay. Goodbye, guys.